Good morning. This morning we are so privileged to have Mr. Myron Mike Koplick with us. It's a very special day for Mr. Koplick, who goes by the name Mike, because today is, at 11 o'clock today was, the celebration of his 90th birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Koplick. Thank you. My name is Kathy, and I work for BOCES, and I have the privilege of teaching computer classes here at the Prendergast Library. It's been a great honor and quite an adventure. And so, Mr. Koplick, I have a couple questions for you today. First of all, what brought you here to the library to take these computer classes? Uh, I found that uh, the ability to know a little bit about the computers is very important to have some concept of the world in which we live in today. And uh, I certainly recommend that, if possible, anybody who has access to computer knowledge should accept it and uh, use it. What is one of the things you like to say? You were born? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I have to say that I was born 50 years too soon. If I had been born today, like my grandchildren, they, at a very early age, are subjected to or have the advantage of computer training. One of the other things that I find that would have been important would be the ability to touch type. I do fine with my index finger and hunt and point, but I certainly recommend that every boy and girl in the public schools of the United States at least should learn how to touch type if they are capable of doing so. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And I think they do emphasize that. Yes, they should. How will you use your new skills? Uh, well, with my limited prior skills, I have been able to research the internet as a library. If I wanted to find out something that happened in the past or any special uh, type of activity, like if I'm interested in astronomy or, or if I have an interest in uh, any subject, I find that I have been able with my prior limited ability to use the internet as the greatest library that ever existed. And when you found something in the past, you always had to do what? <laughs> in the past, if I found interesting things that I wanted to preserve and have access to again, I have always gone and had it printed. So I really have a lot of letter-sized pieces of paper with multitudinous and unbelievable amount of printed material. But I can see that working with you, Kathy, that eventually I will have a method, instead of printing everything, of using the computer to establish these documents on a hard drive and the hard drives have almost infinite capacity now, open tetracycles or whatever they call it. Uh, many, many gigabytes of information can be stored very easily on a home computer. And eventually, if I live long enough, I want to try and move some of the stuff off the papers and onto the hard drive. Okay. In addition to the hard drive, we also use that other little what? Flash drive. Flash drive. And when we plugged your flash drive into our computers, what did we find? We found the missing photographs of a trip that, that I and Joan made to South America. And uh, it will now give us the ability to present that information when our children get together and they can see what we saw. Right. So when we plugged this flash drive into the computer, Lo and behold, it was filled with these pictures that Mr. Koplick and his wife had thought were missing for all these years and weren't able to locate anywhere. So, in addition to finding them, we learned how to transfer them from one flash drive to another. In fact, we now have them on three flash drives. Which we can give one to the children and they can look at it at their leisure, right. at their own homes. 
and you don't have to worry about ever having lost those again. Exactly. Now, and then we also talked about how to save them at home on your computer. Now, in, in Mr. Koblick's case, he brought his wife along, which is also a good idea. It's a Very good <laughs> idea, because she's more knowledgeable than I am. Well, it's two heads to remember everything. That's right. So now she can remember, pick up the pieces where, you know, maybe he forgot something, and now the pictures will also be saved at home. Okay, Mr. Koblick, will you be coming back to take more classes? If I'm alive, I'll be back. All right. Um, how about your little story about your your academia friends? Don't use names, but tell me about that. That was well. I had two friends who were academicians. One of them was a full professor of economics at the Jamestown Community College. The other one was a full professor of biology at Fredonia College, and both of them were absolutely against computers, and they didn't have any, they didn't want any, and they didn't want to use them. I really believed, even when I knew very little, that they were wrong, and that those people today who are able to, who resist the ability to utilize a computer, are certainly in my opinion, very handicapped. Mm -hmm. That's right. What, um, just describe the one project we worked on today. Well, the one project we worked on today was uh, to take a piece of printed existing material and add to that a photograph in all of its variations of the type, of the type and the color and the boldness, etc. And it certainly would mean that one could create the equivalent of a document with a photo and color, suitable perhaps even for framing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have received things like that from friends, and I've always envied their ability, mm -hmm. very definitely envy that. So you're well on your way to be able to doing that. Maybe you don't have it all just yet, well, but <laughs> with a little bit of... With a little bit more of Kathy help. Practice. <laughs> you'll be able to master it. I hope so. Anything else you'd like to tell us on your 90th birthday? Uh, Anybody who's foolish enough not to take advantage of the opportunity for computer information available at the printing gas library is not, uh, not really with it, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Really missing the boat. A lot yes, of great they certainly are. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.